Okay, we've got just a little bit left to do. Um, so <clears throat> looking at the previous answer that we did, or the previous example, we were looking at case three of those three cases that we said that these damped free motion problems can fall under. And uh, in that case, we get that oscillatory motion. Now, the thing is, is it's not a perfect sine wave anymore. It's gonna be kind of a diminishing sine wave. And that's because of this term right here. Um, so you're going to see your sine wave, if you, if you graph this function, start off at, you know, whatever height it starts off at, but then the waves are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller as time goes because this factor is shrinking things down. Um, now, the, uh, it, it's still a value to us to write this kind of in a sinusoidal-esque form. So using what we did in the, the undamped motion case, we could derive the same stuff and show that this equation can be put into this form, where once again we have A and this phase angle um, phi. Now A no longer represents the amplitude because this is not a, um, this is not a, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I can't think of it all of a sudden. It's, it's not a perfect sine wave. Again, it's that diminishing sine wave. But we can still make use of this form, which we will in an example. Um, the derivation that we did before would give us the same relationships between A, phi, and the two parameters C1 and C2. So we'll make use of those as well. Okay? So thinking back to our previous example that we did in the last video, we would like to take the solution that we found and put it into that form. And then using that, we'd like to find the times at which the mass passes through our equilibrium position, but heading downward. Okay, so <clears throat> let's take a look at that. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, here's my previous solution. I have it right here. Okay, and um, I'm going to distribute that one half back in. So we have x of t equals e to the negative 2t times 1 half cosine of 4t plus 1 half sine of 4t. Then The reason I'm doing that is because that immediately shows me what c1 and c2 are equal to, which are used in the formulas for finding our phase angle and for finding a. So this means a is going to equal the square root of c1 plus squared plus c2 squared. That's 1 half squared plus one-half squared, which comes out to root two over two, okay? Our phase angle uh, has this relationship, tangent of phi is equal to um, C1 over C2, one-half over one-half, which equals one, okay? Now, both our parameters are positive, meaning sine and cosine are both positive, uh, sine of phi and cosine of phi are both positive. That happens in the first quadrant. And in the first quadrant, the angle at which tangent is equal to 1 is pi over 4. In this case, the inverse tangent function would have given you the correct answer. Okay, so that right away tells me how I can write my function in that form. x of t is equal to a, which is root 2 over 2, times e to the negative 2t, uh, times sine of, now lambda squared minus omega squared is how we got the 4 here in the first place. So really, it's just 4t plus our phase angle, plus pi over 4. Okay, now it's saying uh, find the times at which the mass passes through the equilibrium position heading downward. All right, now in order to do that, we're looking at for where x is equal to zero, but specific times when s, x is equal to zero. And notice that if x is going to equal zero, this factor can't equal zero, so that means that sine of 4t plus pi over four is what we're gonna be setting equal to zero. But let's look at this the way that we would analyze just the regular sine function. If I'm graphing y equals sine of x, I know that that function looks like this. That's one cycle of that function. And I've got some important values here, pi over two, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, this keeps going that way. So there's a few places where my function passes through 0, right? But it's saying find the times at which the mass passes through equilibrium heading downward. Downward. The way that we orient our axis for these spring mass systems is that if you're moving downward and you pass through the equilibrium position, you're going from the negative x values 
through zero and into the positive x values. So looking at my graph for sine of x, when do we go from negative values past zero and into positive values? Well, it happens here and it happens here. Here we have a zero, but we're going the wrong direction. Okay, And then we would see the same thing happening again at 4 pi when we do one more cycle of this thing. So it looks like the type of behavior that we're looking for happens every time we reach a multiple of 2 pi. Okay, So what does that tell me? Well, let me uh, take a look at my sine function here. I need the input on this sine function to equal a multiple of 2 pi in order for this thing to be passing through equilibrium heading downward. So I take the argument out, 4t plus pi over 4, and I set that equal to 2 pi n, n giving me the multiple, any multiple of 2 pi. n is just some integer, and then we're going to put a restriction on it in a minute. If I solve this for t, I get t equals, um, this would become pi over 2 n minus pi over 16. Did a little bit of algebra there. I'm sure you can fill in the blanks. And then I need to determine what n is allowed to equal. n cannot equal 0, because if it was, then t would equal negative pi over 16. And we're, we're not considering negative times here. Time, time needs to be greater than or equal to 0. But if n equals 1, I get my first positive number out of this thing. So n can equal 1, 2, 3, or any other positive integer from there. Okay? So that answers that question. And that also wraps up section 5.1.